Hey guys, this is Mike here at Area 51 back at you with another video this evening. And this video has been requested. Uh, we've had several people who have watched our MoTeC videos who appreciated them, thanked us for them. So it's going to be useful and helpful for them. But um, they were road course racers. Noticed that most of the, uh, what we talked about and focused on uh, was for oval racing, especially NASCAR oval racing, which would be trucks, uh, Xfinity, uh, Cup. Uh, which has the next gen cars and stuff. And uh, they said, you know, is there any road specific stuff that you guys do and that you guys put out? Um, and, uh, you know, basically looking for road specific things inside of MoTeC as well. So what I have done is I told you guys, if I make an update to the uh, workbook that I will release it, which is what I'm going to do in this video. And then I will also go and replace the download link in the previous videos uh, with my new version, which will be 1.1 version 1.1 one of our workbook. And what I've done is uh, I have went and added a, a new page, the driver development section. Uh, and that page focuses on um, shifting points, which is very important in road racing. And in general, uh, our iRace or our iRacing workbook uh, for MoTeC uh, is uh, the, the same pages and screens that you use for oval racing. So we'll let you guys know that you use those exact same pages and screens for road racing. Uh, they're usable, uh, but I think the gear map and then the gear shifting gear map is something specific to road racing that we didn't have in there. And I thought that was a missed opportunity. So we're going to go, we went ahead and corrected that. Uh, you guys can go right now in the description below and download uh, the new um, the new workbook. And so also check, uh, I'm going to put a card right up right here, right now in the video uh, that you can go and find uh, the video where I'm going to show you guys um, whenever we uh, provide new versions of the software uh, to, um, to how to how to install them. Uh, so <clears throat> and how to replace your current workbook uh, with a new workbook. So go and check that video out as well. That way I can help you. But I want to go through the actual uh, the actual things that I've added to this workbook. And I want to kind of go through the workbook with uh, road courses in mind and show you the things uh, that, that, are, that can work great and are going to be valuable to you guys. So let's go ahead and do that right now. All right, guys, we are now in our Area 51 driver development workbook, and I want to clear this out and show you what it is. This is a, a telemetry file that I have from Watkins Glen that I ran here last week. We're going to go ahead and, and load, that back, load that back up. We just go in. There's Watkins Glen, and there's the one I had loaded up. And all of the sheets that we had previously for oval are going to work with, with road. Uh, this is the first one. It has your lift points, brake points, um, brake values, your steering uh, angles, and stuff of that nature. Difference is, is we're not on we're not on an oval, which is much shorter than most road courses. Plus, there's multiple turns in road courses, and so it's going to be very difficult to see each turn um, and, and how how you know easy and heavy you were on and off the throttle. So what you can do is you simply go to let's say turn five and double click on it, and then this is going to show you turn five only, and you can use your mouse wheel to scroll in and out. So, you know, so you can scroll in with your mouse wheel and you can scroll your mouse wheel backwards to scroll out. And then you, know, you can also move it in that area. If you want to get your whole lap back, you go up here to the lap numbers at the top, lap two, lap three, and you can just simply double click. Okay. And so you want to zoom in on another turn, say turn six. Yeah. Oh, well, that's a little bit too small. Well, instead of double clicking on lap two again, there's a, you see there's a green black or green box right here. You can actually grab a hold of each side of it and pull it in and out to be able to zoom in and out a bit. So you want to go back to this turn. Let's say we want to focus on that turn. You can grab the other side of the box and bring it here to zoom it in some more. And so now, now we're looking um, at, uh, at uh, turn five. Um, you can see how, you know, how we were on the gas entering into turn five, how we lifted off, how we came off. So very similar to oval racing. The difference is oval racing um, only has two real turns. They break them up. They break each turn apart into two. So you have you know, technically four turns. 
uh, even though you're, you're, it's all, it's all one big turn as far as your, th- you know, your throttle and your inputs on your wheel and everything goes. And so they're easy. You don't have to zoom in or out on those. So this is just a bit of added complexity um, to make it work. You can move this box around, you know, to zoom in and out. And then if you want to get go to a full lap, you double click on the lap. Then if you want to go to a turn or straight stretch, you can find it right here on this line. And like if you want to go to the back straight, you just simply double click on that section of the track and it takes you there. The bus stop at Watkins Glen is part of the back straight and you can see how I uh, use the throttle to go through it right there. So again, just a little bit of added extra things you have to do here, but it's still very usable. Same, same uh, worksheets and everything. Uh, and same thing here with the, with the lift points, with the track map. Uh, ground speed and RPMs. Now, this is going to be important, too, uh, for uh, road racing, looking at RPMs and ground speed. Next, I want to get to tab four, which is, it, it, <laughs> I slid all the tabs past this down once. The old tab four is now tab five, but we added one. And this is the one that I added. I spent a t- little bit of time creating this from scratch. Uh, this is gear maps. Okay. This is a gear mapping um, uh, track position map here. And what this does is this color code, and this was added specifically for road racing because where you shift, what gears you carry through turns, um, that kind of stuff can actually add a lot of speed to your run. Um, and so you also want to know the rev, you know, the engine rev limiter, which I got here, digital readout. I got a digital readout of ground speed. This is all on the right-hand side, a digital readout of the RPMs. Then we got your throttle input, brake input, steering input, and your gear number right here. We also find the gear collar coded and listed here. Um, and so you can go out on the track and find out, you know, what, what where you're in each gear like so the yellow is the fourth gear so every time you see yellow on the track i was in fourth gear uh orange is third gear so i was in third gear here and so basically what you're going to do is is you're going to go around the track and find out like where you're shifting try 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 finding places that you're down shifting and see if you can carry more speed through at a higher gear and there also might be certain areas of the track that you're going through in a higher gear and you notice your rpm it, your RPMs are down and you say, well, I might be able to downshift into a lower gear and get more speed by running a higher RPM during over that turn. And one of those places that I found that true here at Watkins Glen for me last week um, that I really use this for is you go out of the bus stop here into the carousel and into the carousel, you can see I'm in fourth gear and I took it in fourth gear most of the time. But after Tracy and I looked at this, we figured out that, you know, you could, you're still well within the RPM limit uh, on the TAC if you were to stay in third gear. So if you simply come out of the bus or you come out of the bus stop here, out, out of the back stretch in the bus stop here, and then you, so when you enter the carousel, if you downshift a third gear, you can actually run a higher RPM all the way around this turn out the exit in third gear. And then you don't have to shift to fourth gear until you actually exit the turn. So we picked up a little bit of speed there. This is something we used to pick up a little bit of speed there last week at Watkins Glen. Uh, so this, this is an important in oval racing, but in road racing, this is very important. So I added this for you guys uh, here to our, to our uh, workbook. And that's why the workbook is going to have a new version number. Then there's the lap statistics. This thing is, everything here is still as valid for road racing as it is for oval racing. Your, uh, your temperatures aren't quite as, as important because you're not throwing tape on the car like you would in NASCAR stuff. But right here, the eclectic times per track section, very, very, it's, it's the same. It's similar and very valid a thing to look at and, and also to look at your eclectic times um, as well. Uh, we got your track map here. I want to show you the track map uh, editor. You can, you can g- auto generate the track same way. Watkins Glen does not have the GPS data in it. Go check out the video I just did on fixing the issues with tracks that are missing GPS data and still drawing them in MoTeC. I'll put a card to that video right up above now. Uh, so you can go back and generate the track, but you can gener- auto generate the sections too. I've already done that. I've manually gener- or auto generated and manually corrected these sections. 
Um, and it's the same way you do it on the NASCAR. You just got to you know, go find which you know, turn numbers and straight numbers and stuff and put them in there. So you select generate sections. Remember, we're going to do zero threshold for the turn. And see, now this auto generated something that was pretty messed up. That's not really right. But you can go in and delete sections out and add sections. You know, here you can delete that. Hit yes, yeah, and you can and you can add sections and stuff and move these around uh, and get it get it proper uh, for yourself. And I've already done that for Watkins Glen. So, but it, it functions just the same as the oval stuff. It just takes a little more, you know, TLC to get the track perfect the way uh, for the sections and everything. So I want to cancel this so I can keep what I've already done. The next sheet with eclectic times works just the same as the is the oval stuff we had in the previous video tire temperatures same thing you can go around the track and look and see where you're heating up the tires you know and where you're where you're cooking them uh let me go back to that ground speed with lift points in road racing it is very important to find lift points and here's the here's the track that's generated and it's got all the lift points in red where i lifted and so it may make it easier to find uh, to find your braking slash lift points here um, and using this stuff in, in road racing as well. And then we said so we had eclectic times. We had tire temperature uh, where it shows you where you're cooking your tires at because you don't want to burn your tires up in road either, just like an oval. And here's another one for tire wear where you're getting, where you're heating them up and stuff. And then, the wheel spin for your spinning or locking up your wheels still just as valid on road as it is an oval. Uh, here we're going to go to the setups tab here and a uh, couple of things. One thing I want to show you is that if, first of all, um, everything is, if, if, if the sensor is on the road course car, uh, it will record it and it will show it here. If it's not on the road course car, it won't record it and might have some blank areas here. Uh, not just in this sheet, I'm just talking about in general with the setups area. And so one thing I'm going to show you right here is you can see in NASCAR, all your ride heights are low. This telemetry file is for the MX-5, Mazda MX-5 at Watkins Glen. So in the MX-5s, they set a little higher off the ground than NASCAR stuff does. So you can see that some of this stuff is outside of the range. Well, let's figure out why. You simply right-click and you go to properties. And you come here to minimum and maximum range. Oh, those ranges weren't auto-generated. They were manually put in, 0 and 5, 0 and 8. So no wonder there's some that's off the scale because this was set up and manually tuned for NASCAR. So we simply say, okay, let's go redo the scale. So we double-click on each one of these channels, and you're going to hear the mode. Instead of doing a manual minimum maximum, we're going to do auto. And we're going to do this for all of them. And this will work for your NASCAR stuff too. I don't know. I can't remember why I put manual stuff in there, but again, with to begin with, uh, but the auto will work. And so we're going to go through auto and properties. Oh, this last one is auto. There we go. Now you can see it reset the scale now uh, to, to sh it will easily, sh a lot better anyway, show you the ride heights and stuff there at the bottom by simply going and changing the scaling uh, minimum and maximums to auto. So that uh, helps you there. Same thing, though. You're looking at ride height splitters, that kind of stuff. Now we go to the splitter A tab, same deal. You have your front left right height, front right height height, or front right right height. You have your rake, you have the track here to be able to go around and, and uh, it's got the, all the digital right heights here, uh, the race heights, what they are dynamically on the track. So yeah, that's same. It's just as useful in road racing. Splitter in motion. Now this one is not used if it's in a road course uh, because uh, a lot of the road cars don't necessarily have the splitter, you know, down a splitter or or even you know even a splitter at all or the splitter down on the ground. So this one's actually not going to be useful for road racing. Um, same thing with the skirt heights. I mean, some of them have skirts, some of them don't. You see some of these that where the lines aren't moving. That's because it doesn't have that. But for the ones, the pieces of the car that it does have this information for, it does go through and work for road as well. 
Uh, and then here on these bump shock tabs five, six, and seven and eight. Remember, I mentioned in our previous video on setups and MoTeC, the first video on the MoTeC setups, is that either five and six will work or seven or eight or seven and eight will work like on the nascar side for the trucks and the xfinity it uses like bump rebounds and stuff to calculate these values and so the five and six work for those but in the a car uh, the new next gen car uh, they actually use more of a true shock and then that's when you have the shock bump and rebounds and the shock velocities and so they're and so they're two different things so on road courses most of them use the same kind of suspension and shocks as the next gen car so if we click there surprise surprise here they are um, you have your histograms uh, for the rebound and stuff to be able to tune some stuff there for them and then you also have the shock velocity uh, graph here as well so that's pretty much it every all this stuff works on nascar or, or road courses just the same as it works on nascar plus i just went back and added a whole new sheet for you guys on shift points to really help you focus on road racing. So that's what we want to make this workbook as, as user-friendly as possible. I have all the data in it you need for all kinds of different racing and I racing. So just a reminder, if you guys have anything you'd like to add to the workbook, anything you're looking to track telemetry wise, just shoot us a message and we'll see what we can do. We might be able to update our book for everybody and put out a new release. So that's all we have for this video. Um, I hope you find this useful and this was brought to us by one of you guys in our community that, hey, uh, give us some more road course specific stuff. So I hope you feel like we've uh, done that in this video and uh, just ask that you would go down and if you have not subscribed yet, please hit that subscription button down below. There's also a bell icon to get notified. Uh, you hit that bell icon anytime we put up great. Uh, content here on our channel, whether it's our awesome on-demand content and how-to videos or our live streams or the Monday night strength of field broadcast, Sunday night uh, a podcast at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, all that stuff you get notified. Uh, then down below in the description, I hit the show more button, expand that out. You're going to find affiliate link, the majors garage in there. Plus they offer the free baseline setups. Plus you got two other great places to get your free setups from as well. If you'd like to get some free setups. Uh, and then finally, there is a 10% off discount code or promo code from Maconi setup shops for your setup purchases. They are all everything in Maconi setup shop is 10% off except for any of their monthly uh, subscription services or season passes or whatever. They're already heavily discounted. So yeah, if you shop there with Jeff, uh, use that uh, promo code to get 10% off. And if you just want to try them out, why not get 10% off when you try out uh, that Maconi setup shop? So that's pretty much all we have for this video. Appreciate you guys being with us. And for myself and everyone at Area 51, we just appreciate y'all being here and being part of our community. And as always, we will see you in the next one.